Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video you're going to build here the Google Bard clone using Python. You also say that how can you use the Google Bard API in Python and build one web application. In order to use the Google Bard API, first you need to go on the Google Bard website. So this is the Google Bard website but you don't see here any API options key. So in order to get the API, you need to use here the PSID key that is stored on your browser. So for that, you need to right click here and you can see here inspect and you can see here the applications and you can see here secure one PSID key. This is nothing but your API key for the Google Bird. Now using this, you are going to fast the data from this Google Bird. That's mean we can build a chatbot using this Google Bird API. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to copy this. Now I'm going to use this in my Python program. So in order to use the Google Bart API, you need to install here one library that's called Bart API. For that, you need to open your command prompt and type here pip install and the library name is called the Bart API. So using this API, I mean Bart API library, you can fast the data, you can connect your Python script to the Google Bart. Now I'm going to click it to close it because I already installed this library before. Now I'm going to import it from Bart API. So let's say from Bart API, I'm going to import here the Bart. Well, now I need to use here the API key or you can say secure one PSID key that I am copied from my website. For that, I need to also import here the OS. Then I'm going to use here one environment of the OS. So let's say os.environ and inside this, you need to give here the path. So my path is nothing but my BART API. So this should be the underscore BART. That's called API. It's called key. That's I copied from the browsers. Now I'm going to pass it in a single quotation or you can give here in double quotations. Well, so this is my API key for the bird API. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use this bird, this bird dot get answer. This is the get answer and it will take one user input. Let's take it from the users. So let's say this is nothing but our input. I'm going to take it from the user. So let's say enter your prompt right well okay that should be the m now i'm going to store it inside one variable let's call let's say masses now i'm going to pass this message inside my get answer functions now let's try to print it out let's try to print it this but get answer in a message well so it's better you can also convert them into the string right so let's convert it into the e string, right? Now, if I go on here, I can go and run the file from the terminal. And also I can run this file from here. Let's run from here. You can see here, enter your prompt. Let's say what is Google, let's say what is Google, right? And enter. So you can see the get answer missing one required position argument that's called input text, right? Well, I got this error because this bot is nothing but one functions itself. So this is one instance. So for that, I need to also make it like that. So now let's run the code here again. And let's say what is Google, right? So Google, enter. Now it will waiting for a few seconds. It will fast the data from the Google Bart API. And it will show you on the kernel. Or you can say the terminal, right? So well, you can see here it actually give me one uh, json format i mean json file you can see here it have the content we need the content actually and we have the conversational id and we have the text query and also you have you can see the content so i am going to fast the content from here so let's say i'm going to fast the message and after message i'm going to fast the content so let's say this should be the content well so now if i run the code here again okay now let's say uh, what is 2 plus 2? Well, okay, we got one key error. Well, we got the key error because this is not C. <laughs> okay, we need to make it C. So that's why we got this error. Now save it and run the code again. So let's say what is 2 plus 2. So this should be always be 4. Okay, you can see here 2 plus 2 equal to 4. Well, it will take few seconds because it depends on your internet connections. 
So my internet connection is right now so bad. So that's why I actually give me the result very slowly. So no problem. Now what I'm gonna do here, we are going to convert this uh, Google Bird API into one web applications. So for that, what I'm gonna do here, you're going to use here the simple uh, web framework in Python that's called Streamlit. So for that, I need to also import it. So let's say import Streamlit as ST. And we also import the Streamlit chat so that it looks like one chatbot, right? So for that, what I'm gonna do here, we are going to import it from Streamlit. Streamlit, let's call it chat. We're going to import here the masses, right? Well, so we only import the Streamlit chat and you also import the Streamlit. Now, what I'm gonna do here, we are going to uh, just comment out those lines, right? Because you're gonna take it from the input text box. So for that, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to actually create your functions. So this function actually generate the input from the user prompt and also create here another functions which will take the input from the users. So first take the response. So let's say response, it's called response from user or let's say response from API. And I'm going to pass here the prompt as argument. So let's say PO arrow and P prompt. Then what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to uh, simply use this one, bird. And I'm just going to return it as a message. So let's say this is called message. And I'm just going to simply return it, right? Let's say return message. We're just going to create here the functions, right? Now we're going to create here another functions for taking the input from the user. So let's say def user input. So let's say user input. And it will one simple text box uh, from the streamlet. So let's say this is called st dot text input. So this is the text input. So let's give here one message. Let's say call enter your prompt. Okay, P R O M P T prompt like that. Right. So let's assign into one variable. Let's call input text. So let's say input text. Now we're going to simply message you know, return this input text. Let's say return input text. Well, so we define here two functions. One is for response from API and another one for taking input from the users. Let's keep here also one title. So let's say st dot title. Then let's keep here the Google Bird clone. Google Bird clone. Well, now what I'm gonna do here, we have the title, we have the uh, response API functions, which will take the input from the users. And also we have the function that's called the input user, I mean user input. Now what we're gonna do here, we're going to create here two empty list. So first list actually store the input user, I mean user input, and another one is store the generated text so that we can store it. And after all, uh, when you give here any new command, it's not removed from the uh, text. I mean, it, it's not removed from the apps, right? So sort that we are going to define here two sessions. So one for generated and another one for the past, that means the user input. So for that, what I'm gonna do here, we're going to create the session. So for that, you're gonna use st.session. So this is called session state. So this session state actually generate, actually store the value, store the value in a generated list and also the past list, or you can say the user input list. So let's say this is called generated, that is generated from the API. And another one is for the nothing but the users so this should be the fast okay let's make it fast or you can say also uh, user input like that so now let's say we have already the data right so we are not going to remove it right so first we're going to check this is there any data is available inside our sessions or not so let's say if generated let's say generate okay generate uh, not in st dot session state so this is called session state so we are going to simply create here uh, two empty list and another one for let's say if uh, the past is not available inside the session state we're going to create here another list that's called past so this first is nothing but uh, for user input and this session state for generated is nothing but for my response from the api 
now we created the two empty list now we're going to what i'm going to do here we are just going to uh, push the data that is coming from the api and also the users right then what i'm going to do here we're going to show it in one chatbot app right now we are going to uh, call this user input so let's say this is my user text so let's say user text equal to just call it let's say user input so this is my user input we just call it now if the user give to the text if the user give the text so now we're going to call the function that's for response from api so this is called response api now i'm going to pass here the user text that is coming from this method that's called user input then this is nothing but my output so let's call my output now i'm going to store it inside my session state so let's say st dot session state so this is my session state this one and i'm going to store the output in my generated so this is called generate okay this is my generate this is my session state and dot append i'm just going to append it right so i'm going to append here my output right and also on my first session state i'm just going to pass here my user text that is coming from the users so let's say user text let's pass it right so now we got the output right we have stored it inside my output variable and after that i'm going to store it inside my generate list and also my past list now what i'm going to do here i'm just going to show it in a chatbot format right now i'm going to pass here some code uh, this will actually help me to she see the chat history right so this is all about the code so don't worry you will get this code in the video description at the github link so now what i'm going to do i'm just going to save it and go here and go to the terminal and type here stream lit run okay this should be the main.py right main.py it will open this app in your local server so you need to copy this network url so well so you complete the app application correctly so now what i'm going to do here we actually do here some mistakes let's say this message should be the prompt and also this should be the post right now what i'm going to do here we are just going to run the code here let's go on the terminal and new terminal and my command line should be the stream lit run main dot ui now it will open these applications on your local server so now let's copy this network url and paste it on our browser well i'm going to paste it here let's paste it and it will open the stream lit web applications well so you can see a google bot clone okay you can see enter your prompt so let's say what is google well you can see her running animations it will fetch the data from the api and it will try to show it in my google word chat console because you can use here the stream lead chat okay so we got here a list index out of range we got some error right okay we got this error because this generator should be the first so that's why we got this error well now save it and go to the browser again well now let's reload the applications and now let's type here again let's say what is four plus four well now it's running well you can see what is four plus four you can see here four plus four equal to eight that's you can see here one chatbot uh you can see font or you can see the pictures and you can see here also one user right pictures or you can see icons so let's say i'm just going to let's say c plus plus source code for let's say prime number okay let's say like that i just give here some this kind of thing let's see it's giving me the answer or not well it's giving me the source code for the prime number using the c plus plus well it's also exp explain the program correctly and you can see the previous text i mean previous chat also shown up let's say okay that should be python source code for face detections using open cv let's try this out it will try to generate the source code for face detections using open cv or not let's say wow oh my god it import the cv to also load the cascade classifier well it's detect the face correctly 
I mean the code, join the code correctly, right? So this is how we can use the Google Bird API in Python. So that's it for today now. Hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe to the channels and don't forget to hit the bell icon. And I'll be back with the tutorial. So till then, take care and bye bye.